very large energy. So, um, so, density, so, the, so the density of state goes like square root of E, as we will see is related to the um, critical exponent of self-avoiding loop. If we zoom in near the ground state, we got the, uh, this two behavior of the density of state. This dashed line is an effective theory result, and this solid line is a Schwarzschild result. So we got a, like a complete and smoothly connected looking, perfect looking spectrum uh, as a result. Uh, yeah. So uh, means in, in, in the high temperature and in, in, in all these temperature regimes, Mm -hmm. does uh, the from z beta does the uh, spectral form factor give always the ramp for all the regions or it's only okay so uh, we are studying uh, the just the patching function so we are not uh, uh, studying the and if it is uh, um, related to the random matrix result and the short answer is we don't know Okay, so because essentially you have only one boundary, is that the reason? Because yeah, we are studying one boundary and it's all Euclidean time. So to understand the spectrum form factor, you need two boundaries and yes. also you need uh, another continuing beta one, beta two to IT. Right, okay, okay. thanks. Yeah, no problem. Now let's start to, uh, how, uh, to get this answer. Uh, uh, by the way, a uh, quick note is that uh, if we one use TT bar, then the TT bar will go to uh, go to some uh, as well known at a high high temperature. Uh, the holographic sign will give you some negative norm states. So in this sense, our uh, spectrum is more uh, more nice than the TT bar result, but only because it's a real and it's a real spectrum no negative norm states. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll start with a review of JT gravity. So JT gravity is a two-dimensional dilaton gravity theory and uh, it's a gravitational theory of nearly ADS2. For convenience, let's set the radius of ADS to be one. Then it has the following action. It has a, a topological piece uh, which is the gauss bonnet term, but because it's topological, we just write it as uh, um, some ground state entropy S0 times or a character of the manifold, of the bulk manifold. Then there's a, what traditional called JT uh, action, phi is a dilaton field, and uh, it's a linear in dilaton field. It's multiplying the uh, two dimensional rich curvature and the delta potential is two times five. For convenience, we add the uh, boundary piece, uh, Gibbs Hawking boundary piece to make this theory uh, ha uh, have a well-defined variational uh, problem. And the boundary conditions in JT gravity have two boundary conditions. One is a fixed boundary length, beta, and, that, and another is a fixed delta value to be constant, Phi, uh, to be constant phi boundary. And uh, as, a quantum, uh, as a quantum gravity theory, we need to sum in over all geometries compatible with these boundary conditions. And depends on uh, the ratio of phi boundary and the beta, we can start different uh, uh, theories of JT gravity. For example, the traditional one is we take phi boundary and the beta to the same order and much bigger than one. This will give us a asymptotic limit. And the theory in this limit is studied uh, um, last few years and it did, it's equivalent to the Schwarzschild action, which is a low energy description of SYK system, which is a, a quantum uh, zero plus one dimensional quantum mechanics system. Away from the asymptotic limit, we can take phi boundary large but finite. And we can, um, dial the uh, proper length beta to be arbitrary. So if beta is again uh, as large as phi boundary, we go back to the asymptotic limit. But uh, if we allow beta to be small, then we are going away from the asymptotic limit. Uh, these boundary conditions we call 
as finite cutoff J T gravity. And we we want to so, uh, do the path integral of this action. And uh, here we will take several limits to simplify it. First, we take the ground state entropy to be infinity. This uh, will then the uh, topological action will be dominated by the disk topology because that's a, a leading one with a, a circular boundary, leading topology with a circular boundary. And then we're integrating out the delta field. This set the curvature to be minus two locally everywhere. So it's, it's, uh, it's a rigid hyperbolic space metric. And then we are leaving, with, uh, we have a disk topology on a rigid hyperbolic space metric. Then the only degree freedom is uh, the location of our boundary. So we're left with the boundary mode. So, and here we draw so uh, one possible fr um, boundary fluctuations. Then the boundary modes have an action which given by the exchange curvature because all this piece, uh, this piece is canceled and this we, is a constant, we uh, just uh, ignore it. Then uh, this exchange curvature, we can first using gauss bonnet theory to rewrite it as a bulk integral of the rigid curvature with the uh, with the order characteristic. And because it's a disk topology, it's just a minus four pi. And uh, because of this factor of two, it's minus two pi times phi boundary. And then now, due to the uh, second effect, the curvature becomes a constant negative. So this is proportional to the total area of the uh, bulk region. So in other words, we use uh, the Dilaton constraint we can write the, uh, this exchange curvature to be purely the area piece. So, so this gives us the um, claim to self-avoiding uh, loop statistical problem because uh, A is the area and uh, we, we can interpret the phi B as a pressure. So it's a pre um, pressurized loop. And because this boundary, it's a boundary of a, a box space time. So it should not self intersect. Otherwise it won't have a obvious meaning as a box geometry. So the final um, path integral reduced to the integral of all self avoiding loop with this uh, area weighting. And we left, since we already integrated out the data term, we're left with one boundary condition, which is a, a boundary less to be beta. Uh, are there any problems? Questions? Okay, so very good. So now let's continue. So we, we derive this uh, path integral and we say it's a summing over all the self-avoiding loops. But when we talk about self-avoiding loops, we're actually talking about what uh, particular measure. The self-avoiding loop measure is a unique measure, which is a uniform on all the self-avoiding loops. And in the literature, in the math literature, there are all different uh, measures for self-avoiding loops, which define different theories. And we will give an um, argument of why the gravitational theory should have this uniform measure. Uh, as I mentioned, there are previous work by Kitab Su and myself. In the previous work, we were ignoring the uh, self-avoiding constraint and replace this summation with a uniform measure of all the random work loops. And uh, because random work uh, is exactly solvable, we can write, uh, we can solve that uh, problem with this Reaction, and the and our current work is to put back the self-avoiding constraint. Now, let's go to the argument why we uh, use this self-avoiding loop measure. So, uh, our argument coming from the uh, traditional random triangulation measure for two uh, D gravity, 
which is due to the matrix, uh, matrix quantum mechanics. So in the random triangulation uh, for 2D gravity, we are summing over all the triangulations with uh, uh, at, uh, at each intersection point, there could be multiple edges joining, which represent the local, match, uh, the local curvature fluctuations. But since our data time constraint, we are restricting the curvature locally to be constant. And uh, for simplicity, we, uh, we look at uh, the curvature constraint for uh, flat constraint. So we can require, we can examine this random triangulation measure for all flat metric. Then this corresponding to restricting the uh, joining of the edge to be six at, uh, at each center. And manifestly, this becomes, the, uh, the boundary becomes a self-avoiding loop on this tri uh, triangular uh, lattice. So, and we think this, so strictly speaking, we are using um, flat space uh, constraint to uh, argue this, but we think this can be, uh, should be a, re a reason we expect uh, even for a constant negative curvature. Okay, so now let's uh, have a quick uh, overview of self-avoiding work in two-dimensional flat space. So self-avoiding work is, isn't an exact solvable uh, statistical problem in math literature. And uh, uh, in 2D, it has fractal dimension for third. Namely, at, uh, any linear size of the system scale with the number of steps, so self-avoiding work steps, as a power three, four, uh, three quarter. Where here A is the lattice spacing, so uh, distance, the length of each step, and N is the total number of steps. And in order to uh, go to the continuous limit, we need to uh, define a rigorous length, which is uh, uh, we call the beta, which uh, has dimension for third. So, so we define uh, the rigorous beta proportional to the total number of steps with the regularization. A to the four third. Or one can call this as a half stop uh, measure of the self avoiding work. So, uh, so we can, for example, look at uh, the continuous, uh, it's a continuous area which has dimension uh, two. Then the continuous area will be proportional to beta to the three half from dimension analysis. Uh, and, uh, sorry. Yes. Can I ask a question? So, what is the easiest way of uh, seeing these uh, dimensions? Uh, maybe can you say a bit about where you get these numbers from? Oh, so, uh, well, I think, I guess it's hard to uh, see that uh, this fractal have dimension four third. So, you, what do you really need to uh, uh, do a simulation and uh, say you exam uh, the end to end distance? Then you find and you uh, you find it's like as a function of the uh, number of steps. Or as you as I said here, you can study all those uh, on a computer. You can study all those self-avoiding loops. It's like a closed work, and you look at uh, the mean area of self-avoiding works with fixed number of steps. Then you find the uh, scaling. It's beta to the three half. Like, is there some kind of uh, some some kind of conformal field theory or something which? Oh yes, oh yes. I forgot to mention about that, right? So the self-avoiding work in two D, you can uh, in flat space you can study it as n equal to zero, uh, or a model. And there, this uh, beta to the three half is uh, uniquely related to the um, dimension of the energy. Yeah. Thanks. But that's, that's only in 2D flat space without uh, uh, any, any measure. So, so uh, just with a, uh, without with any action. So here we are studying a more complicated problem which uh, have action, which is this area action. 
and also we want to put it on ADS. Neither of the problem has been uh, have found the uh, uh, conformal field theory uh, analysis or the OM model analysis. So we don't know how to use the OM model to study the theory. So what will, yeah. Uh, but is there a way to numerically do this problem in the curved space also? Well, that will be a computational challenge. We found some uh, numerical paper just studying uh, self avoiding works uh, without uh, um, pressure on uh, uh, hyperbolic space, and that gives the same uh, uh, fractal dimension. Yeah. Thanks. But uh, with the uh, area pressure, uh, with the pressure, it hasn't been studied yet. Yeah. So, and so there's this quantity, this area, and also there's uh, uh, this um, patching function of unpressurized self avoiding work. Uh, and uh, this, is a, uh, this is a conformal theory result. Uh, the patching function is proportional to 1 over beta 2 to 3 half. And actually this, uh, just uh, using this uh, factor, we can, uh, we can see that uh, the high energy behavior of this uh, uh, GHG gravity has to be square root of E because this, uh, this work at uh, the in very small circle, so uh, uh, the pressure piece will become negligible. So that will become approximately equal to this patching function. Then, uh, you do an uh, inverse Laplace transformation, you get a density of state is square root of E. Okay. Are there um, any questions? Zenbinder is a question from Asar Said, and he is asking how does it relate to self avoiding loop? Oh, okay. So, so we, we are studying the JT gravity, right? So we are. We're studying this uh, uh, gravitational path integral. We are doing, uh, we are taking the limit of uh, S not go to infinity. So we get the disk topology. And uh, then we argue that uh, uh, this gravitational path integral only give, gives you a path integral of the boundary mode. And since it's a boundary of some bulk regime, of boundary of a disk, it has not it has not self to intersect. And the JT action just gives you this pressure uh, piece. And uh, in the end, we got the uh, self avoiding loop uh, path integral. Does that answer the question? He says yes. Okay. So because a uh, uh, local is a self avoiding loop is a fra uh, fractal, that means the uh, microscopic boundary of the JT gravity is actually a fractal. And uh, so we will first uh, solve this theory in the, in the high temperature regime. So beta is very small, smaller than ADS radius. Then, um, then uh, this, boundary, uh, this whole bulk region will not feel the curvature because it's smaller than the ADS radius. And we can approximate this as a flat space JT gravity. And it's also uh, related to the CGHS model as, uh, uh, as being studied in the uh, early, it's 80s or 90s? Yeah. And so we first talk about the flat space JT. So we want to do this uh, following statistic sum. Um, this we uh, we can first expand it for small p. So we got this uh, power series. Then after summing over that, this summing over one just gives you the unpressurized uh, patching function and. Uh, as I said, it will give you one over beta two to three half. And then we, we get uh, these several sums of the expecting value of the area. And by dimensional analysis, this area has to be 
proportional to beta to the three half. So we can sum it over those pieces and into a function called f, which is p times beta to the three half. Uh, with the correct normalizations, we can define the partition function c beta is like one over beta to the three half times f of y, where y is beta to the three half times p. And as you can see, uh, when beta goes to very small, it's dominated by this one, which gives you the high temperature region. And such a, uh, yeah. So the, the challenge is to find this function of y. And unfortunately, this function has been guessed by uh, mathematicians in self-avoiding loop literature. And what is they, uh, based on their analysis, for, um, for some, some statistic model. And their conjecture of this f of y is, is that f of y can be expanded in a series. And this coefficient have this following recursion relation. And the later, uh, Cardi proved this formula using an argument based on priority source for large and negative p. And uh, for this uh, Richard gottman jensen these people, they uh, check this formula to 10 orders, uh, first 10 orders in powers of y, with a very high precision uh, in numerics. And we check this formula for large positive y in a, in a alternative regime. Use, uh, with uh, the effective description I'll mention later. So that's very remarkable conjecture. And uh, if you plug this in, and uh, then you do a, a inverse Laplace transformation to get the density of state, you find that if it actually can be uh, exactly uh, resum to give you this array function. So that's the array function I mentioned before. And a part of this function can be shown here. So at uh, large positive e, this goes to square root of e. And uh, when e is uh, negative, it uh, goes like e to the minus uh, e to the 3 half. And uh, this region will be matched with the effective theory description later. So for the intermediate region, we have additional scale from the ADS reduce. Uh, There's no, yes. Uh, so uh, for a large negative P, uh, yeah. so it, is it dominated by large A or? Uh, uh, for large neg, no, for large negative P, uh, it's uh, one area to be small because uh, okay, the, it's weighting of E to the P times oh, A. Yes. It oh, goes to the branched polymer physics. And that's uh, uh, what uh, Cardi can use uh, this piracy source. There, the exact solution is known, or yeah, there the exact solution is known. I see. And and does it have any nice modular like property uh, in any uh, modular property? Uh, um, it's it's become effective like uh, there. Uh, it's like quantum mechanics, so. Uh, there's some localization technique to solve it. Um, I'm not aware of uh, modular property. Yeah. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what's good is that if you uh, do an inverse Laplace transformation, you find that the the function is analytic in P, so you can start with the exact result and uh, go into the positive P. And this analyticity is important to get this. Uh, every function distribution. Yeah, for large negative p, there is a different every function. Yeah, so well, uh, it's a yeah mm -hmm. for the pattern function. Yeah. <clears throat> now uh, at the intermediate region, we have an additional scale from the ADS radius, so we don't know how to solve this anymore. So we do, what we do is we will build an effective theory description to solve this region. In, 
for large P. So it's a perturbative theory uh, in terms of uh, pressure. And um, as I said, this was mostly connected to the fast space regime and asymptotic regime. So at large pressure, the typical for configuration will be macroscopically a circle. So the micros, uh, as a fluctuation at a small scale, give you an anthropic force trying to make this circle to be small so that it can have more configurations. But there's this pressure, so it makes this, uh, this circle to be big again. So it's like a rubber band, you can think. So as a rubber band, we can build an effective theory by summing over this uh, anthropic, uh, anthropic pressure. So we can, uh, so we can divide this shape into this uh, several macroscopic segment as I draw here. And the same, same uh, this mic, uh, UV fluctuations will not change the area a lot. We can sum it over this UV fluctuations, assuming uh, this uh, uh, just as unpressurized, uh, it's locally unpressurized as several volume work and it's a fast space. And uh, then the area, the microscopic area can be approximated by the enclosed area by this smooth segment. And the summation of the uh, microscopic fluctuations uh, of each segment will give us an additional action to the JT gravity theory. And this is given by the uh, propagator of uh, flat space self avoiding work. So let's uh, have an overview of the propagators of uh, random work. So for ordinary random work, as we well know, that uh, it's, it gives you the uh, free particle propagator. So it's a, so the end to end distribution is a Gaussian distribution. Beta is the number of steps, R is the end to end distance. We got this uh, diffusion propagator. And for the self avoiding uh, work propagator, it's the exact form is unknown. But fortunately, since we are looking at a large P, so this put very tight, we are looking at the long distance distribution of the propagator. And this uh, has been uh, checked numerically to a very high precision that it has the following form. It's e to the minus r fold over beta to the cube. This is related to the uh, scaling dimension of the self avoiding work. So for random work, it's one, uh, the uh, fractal dimension is uh, one half. That's uh, responsible for this R squared. And uh, here it's like um, uh, uh, three quarter. So that's uh, responsible for this four. And here I'm uh, copying a figure from this uh, paper, math paper from 1995 about the, uh, this distribution with the exact uh, numerical simulation. And we find that you see that at a large distance, it matches perfectly. So we can- I, I, have, a question. Yes. I have a question then. Uh, so the, uh, the Gaussian distribution essentially is the solution of a, a differential equation, a simple yes. differential equation. Mm -hmm. Is the corresponding uh, type of differential equation known for the self-avoiding walk? No, no. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no di differential equation for the self-avoiding walk. And no higher order I, equation. Uh, yeah, uh, partially I think it's probably because the self avoiding work uh, isn't uh, Brownian. So you, so you need to know that uh, when you, so you get the di differential equation of the um, random work by just knowing the uh, previous configuration and exam its next step, then you go to continuous limit. But this self avoiding work to go to the next step, you didn't know what it has been in the early steps. So it's That's like- right. Right. I see, I see, no. I see. It's, it's non-Markovian. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
So uh, using this propagator, we can uh, get an effective action. So, so in the uh, smooth limit, we have this uh, original uh, pressure area action plus this con new contribution from the propagator. And because it's uh, add to the force, and if you uh, discretize it, you find it give you this x dot to the force uh, for the uh, derivative effective action. This piece is entropic action. And we can check this action up to one loop order. To have orders, we need to know, U, know UV, uh, new UV information from self body work. For example, this uh, additional power of add, uh, this additional power will enter the scene. So this is effective action could only be charted to one loop order. And since we are looking at this, uh, uh, small, uh, this uh, uh, IR fluctuations, so, so small uh, this one loop fluctuation will not uh, fill the other boundaries. So we don't need to worry about this non-local, non-localness. And uh, so I will first, I'll just uh, uh, discuss the uh, classical calculations. So one loop calculation can be done by standard technique, but uh, it's lengthy, I will not discuss it. So the classical solution is easy to get. So uh, this entropic action, so we, uh, we, we are looking for the classical solution, which is a circle. So we call this circle have length L. Then this entropic action gives you L to the force of a beta to the cube coming from the propagator and then it has a JT action. Uh, using hyperbolic geometry, we can find uh, uh, the area is equal to square root of L squared plus one. Then we uh, minimize uh, the IR length L, we can find the classical setup as the following. Uh, this lead, if you plug it in and do a, a inverse Laplace transformation, you can find that this leads to a classical entropy S equal to square root of one minus e to the three half. And if you do a one loop uh, calculation, you'll find the, the, uh, the density of state have an actual square root of e in front of it. Sorry, so uh, that's, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, a question which I should probably ask before. So, you, mm -hmm. uh, did you say that this x dot to the power four reproduces both the this r to the power four behavior and the physics and the power in the front, or uh, the power in the front is some determinant or something? Or? Yeah, this uh, this square to e. You are talking about this? Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about the power in the last slide. Sorry, uh, it's r to the power something. R to the power. Those, no, those will not be determined by this uh, x dot to four. Those will come to a new turn to the effective action, but will not contribute to the one of order. Okay, so so you're you're kind of uh, ignoring that effect, and then this this x dot yeah. to the power four just gets the r to the power four, right? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear. So Did the x dot to the power four term, um, it, it it just gets this uh, power with the exponent in the yeah, previous. Yeah, just term. to get the exponent. Yeah, in the. Yeah, it's, it's coming from the exponent in the propagator. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Sorry. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, is it not possible to somehow uh, uh, write down some uh, field theory in which uh, the propagating particle actually uh, has a very strong repulsive interaction so that if two parts come, they never really cross, but they have to sort of uh, avoid each other. Is there some such uh, thing in yeah. the literature? Yeah, so that's essentially how this OM model, N equal to zero model works. Yeah, there are uh, this interaction field theory uh, uh, calculation. Yeah, but, yeah, but uh, as far as I'm understanding, uh, there's no like a uh, uh, derivation of this propagator from the field theory calculation. The field theory calculation uh, could only give you this one of the beta to the three half. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, is, is there any check of this density of state from any other uh, method? Wh which or one? 
this this intermediate range uh, the density of state uh, do yeah you, did you do you already expect this uh, uh, well yeah so uh uh, so this is the classical calculation. So we can uh, we uh, we will expect this behavior, and we ch we can check it by looking at uh, two different regimes. So uh, we will find that it's smoothly connected to the Schwarzschild regime, the low low temperature regime, and the high temperature regime. I see. So the high temperature regime also. Uh, yeah. Also so so high temperature regime here corresponding to e very small. You get e to the minus e to the three half. That is uh, uh, checked again by the area uh, function. The area function, yeah, yeah, by this. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. No problem. So, in, in in some sense, the area function at this region is already described by the effective theory, but that effective theory is in flat space, uh, in the flat space region. Now we uh, keep increasing beta, so it, it feels a curvature. So it changes this uh, density of state a bit. And we got this form. This form. Now we go to the asymptotic limit. So asymptotic limit is uh, uh, to take be um, beta to be very large. Then the classical, from the classical equation, we see that uh, uh, this beta becomes uh, linear in L, so uh, so the UV lens. So we have two lens here. I forgot to mention we have two lens. Which one is the UV lens? This beta, which is the number of self uh, steps of the self avoiding work, and then we have this L is a uh, R smooth lens, and in the asymptotic limit, these two lens becomes uh, proportional to each other, and uh, actually one can. Check that uh, this effect, uh, from this effective action, uh, this mode become in the in the asymptotic limit. This mode uh, is a, um, this relation is uh, valid even for the uh, fluctuations, and uh, the effective action becomes reduced to the Schwarzschild action. And thankfully, the Schwarzschild action is one loop exact. So because the summing over the long distance fluctuations, and we just use the Schwarzschild answer to uh, get the density of state, which gives you the cinch squared E. So together we got this uh, global picture of the density of state. Again, if you look at this effective uh, field theory, when, uh, so when we just to say that uh, uh, for E goes to zero, it approach to the RGG result. For E close to the ground state, here it's E close to uh, minus one, you uh, expand it around the uh, near the ground state energy, you got e, e to the square of E, which smoothly matches with the uh, Schwarzschild result. So that's a global picture. Okay, so that finishes our uh, uh, derivation uh, of the uh, result. Uh, yeah? Like just uh, about the time when you're uh, about to leave the Schwarzschild regime. Uh, yeah. Do we have a way to characterize the deviation from the Schwarzschild? Now that you know, like I mean, uh, given that there is an exact answer, uh, like uh, like easy. There's a, yeah. So there's an exact answer for the Schwarzschild, but uh, this effective theory is a one root answer. It's not exact. But uh, this RGJ formula is exact. Yeah, this RGJ is exact, but it's like very far reaching from the Schwarzschild. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah. you need to connect this to exact answer using the effective field theory. Okay. But uh, is it understood um, like what happens to the Schwarzschild theory uh, physically before you go to this uh, RGG regime? Uh, Just from the point of view of the quantum mechanics point of view. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or yeah. On some effectivity theory point of view, the boundary or something. Yeah, I I don't think I don't think there's an understanding. In the TDBAR story, uh, to the RGJ, it's like uh, the RGJ formula repeats what they uh, had for the negative density of states. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I can mention here is 
So the TTBI result is more like this effective field theory result, and which you'll find that when E is, uh, uh, so it's actually, it's like minus E to the three half. So there's a non-analyticity at E equal to zero. But uh, at this region, this, uh, bond, the fluctuation is very important and uh, you can never trust this effective field theory and it's got smoothly uh, corrected by this IgG formula. Yeah. That's, that's in, in the gravity theory, that's the regime where this boundary circle is very, very small. So it's like very close to the horizon. Yeah. Okay, now, now I need to uh, describe a puzzle. So in the literature, there are three different results for finite cut of JT gravity. There are our work of the self-avoiding uh, work result, and then there's this Kitavsu result, which is uh, replace this self-avoiding work with a uh, uh, random work. And then there's this TT bar result. So we got the uh, semi-classical density of state squared to one minus e to the three half. Using the uh, random work, uh, we got, you will find that the entropy is square root of one minus e. And the TT bar gives you a square root of one minus e squared. So why are we getting all those three different results? That's because of the entropic force. So the orange of discrepancy is uh, our uh, different assumption of the, uh, of the U, uh, UV fluctuation of the boundary. For example, in, uh, we, when we choose this boundary as a self-avoiding work, we, we argue that uh, there will be a entropic action from the propagator, which give you L to the first over beta to the three. And if you go into the micro canonical ensemble, uh, you'll find that uh, in terms of LR length, the UV energy have this finite power three quarter. Uh, in the Kidav Su case, uh, we using the propagator, we replace the boundary with a random work. So that gives you the uh, Gaussian propagator, so which gives you L squared over beta. Then if you uh, go to micro kinetic ensemble, uh, this gives you this uh, e to the one half in front of the IR length L. And the, in the TT bar, it's, uh, uh, the assumption is that uh, this, this, uh, this UV lens and IR lens are, is, uh, are the same. So it's like a very straight. Uh, uh, it's not even if I have a UV fluctuation of this boundary lens. And then if you go to micro ensemble, you got uh, the following effective theory, which is if L times E. And is and uh, you, in the micro ensemble for this theory, the effective theory calculation is the same. So the only difference is this different power of E, which uh, explain this, our three different results. So this explain classical variation. How about quantum mechanically? From our point of view, is that this L lens L is not well defined quantum mechanically because what actually defined is the number of steps uh, in the U of V, which is beta. So the relation between beta and L will have fluctuations. But maybe we should treat JT gravity as a, a effective theory. And at uh, IR, there are some other descriptions. So, but then we need to UV information to go beyond the classical approximation. We don't know how to do that, but if it's true, because gravity itself can be UV complete. We don't know. A useful analog of relativist is a relativistic particle case, where we have the uh, green function. We can write a, a propagate of a relativistic particle from uh, position zero to position x as a, as a summation of all trajectories. With this gamma is the trajectory from zero to x. There are values of this formula. 
There are two understandings of this formula. One, we can understand this as a UV description. Um, so we can put the 15 on a lattice and then summing over all passes with fixed lengths on a lattice. As well known, this random walk gives you the uh, part, uh, propagator of a non-relativistic uh, particle and then integrating over the proper lens give us this basal k function. So this um, e to the minus x squared over beta is a, a non is a non relativistic propagator, and the integrating over the beta gives you the relativistic propagator. We can also understand this as an effective description. In, in the sense that we're just using the set point approximation of this theory. Then the set point approximation will just give you the propagator is from uh, is a straight line from zero to x. We got uh, the propagator e to the minus mu times absolute value of x. Uh, these are two understanding of this this path integral, and uh, and the first one we get the exact answer for the relativity particle this basal function. And in the IR limit, we got e to the minus square root of mu times the distance. And which is the uh, effective description, but with a different mass. This square root of mu is basically the origin of uh, the different energy uh, scaling in our different approach of self-avoiding uh, loop. And we can see, in this case, we can see direct connection between these two cases. We can start with uh, this UV description. And uh, we first sum over the UV fluctuations to get this non-relativistic propagator. And then we're integrating over um, the number of steps. We can rewrite it, um, rewrite it, re rewrite it as a, uh, as a, as a re relativistic practical pro propagator. And uh, in the end, we got this, uh, this path integral, but with a different mass. But in the intermediate step, we use some uh, semi-classical saddle for this l bind. So we, when we're going to go from this uh, derivation to this derivation, we need to use uh, the classical equation of the l bind. And, uh, so the, so the resulting theory, although it's the same looking as a uh, microscopic theory, but it has a different uh, mass in front of it. And in addition, it only can be trusted into uh, up to one loop. So our treatment of the uh, uh, self-avoiding work is uh, like treating GT gravity with this UV description, but the TT bar is like treating the theory with this description. And we left with one um, question is, which one we should think about is actually the JT gravity. Should we always think about gravity as a effective description? So we always should only trust it around the classical saddle, or we can think about it, we can uh, literally treat it as a UV description. And these two perspectives will give as two different uh, answers in the literature. Okay, uh, with that, uh, I'm done, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Jenwin. Uh, maybe we can unmute our microphone and clap. Thank you. Uh, okay, so now it's time for questions. So if you have any questions, please go ahead. So uh, I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, yeah. So so I gather that there is no uh, no deformation of the SYK model on the boundary, which can produce uh, the results in the uh, in the effective theory, or perhaps uh, also in the deep. Uh, uh, inside of the disk where beta is very small. Yeah. Um, uh, 
Right. So if you go to uh, from the SYK, if you go to the high energy, it will not correspond to this result. It won't correspond to this result. Yeah. Uh, it will not correspond to any of the results. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So here it's only like GT gravity. Yeah. So, so no, can, no, no, no deformation of SYK also uh, can possibly lead to this uh, results. I mean, uh, uh, well, is just one of them. There, well, there, uh, so you can, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can do a deformation of SYK, but to staying at the low energy limit and do a uh, deformation is like uh, some uh, integral transformation of its energy. And uh, so that you can get all of the results because it depends on your integral kernel. But to get the, to, to go to the limit where energy is very, uh, at high energy, like uh, where this RGJ formula enters in, well, no one knows how to do that. And if you just uh, use this deformation, then you necessarily get this negative, uh, negative uh, norm states because those were, uh, non-analytic at uh, my e equal to zero. And, uh, and those, uh, and those will, yeah. So those you need to know the UV information to know what additional deformation you need to add to the SYK. Yeah. Okay. Because we know in SYK model, there are very high energy microstates, right? Those which were, <coughs> Discussed by Kurkulu and Valdesena. Yes. These uh, microstates are very, very high energy states. And perhaps mm -hmm. if we learn how to incorporate them into the SYK model in some way, may may be able to. Uh, right. The Kurkulu and Valdesena state, states is like uh, some end of world brain states. In uh, the JT, in the in the gravity description, but in the in the SYK model, it is just uh, it is just the microstates actually high energy microstates. Yes, they are high energy microstates. Yeah, right. I was just wondering whether if we learn how to handle those states in the SYK model, whether we can uh, access some of these results of JT gravity, which is beyond the Schwarzschild. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's see. So, um, yeah, so those are like the states where energy is like, a, um, here it's like energy goes to zero. Yeah, so, right, I think those states will dominate in the high temperature regime of the SYK system. Right, that is true. That is true. Yeah. And, uh, okay. and uh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's well, low in, some low. Sense, yes. in some sense, there are some indications of those states. Uh, because uh, the, uh, in, uh, if you look at this RGG formula, uh, whatever, um, so although it's unbounded, but uh, the growth is actually bounded. So this, this array function goes from exponential growth to a power of growth. So in some sense that uh, um, its leading com contribution is uh, um, bounded. So it gives you e to the um, five, it's, e, uh, it's like a, the high energy spectrum goes like e to the five boundary times square root of e. So if you forget about uh, this square root of e factor, uh, this high temperature regime gives you the, um, it's like a density of state with finite number of states, e to the phi boundary. And the uh, phi boundary is a transverse area. So it's like give you a counting of the number of states, gravitation, gravitational number of states, which is uh, e to the boundary area. So that's a correct counting, we think, for gravity. From holographic system because you have a, a, a system with a finite area at the boundary yeah. and number of states should be e to that number of area. Right. So, so yeah. So it will be interesting to ask like what. Uh, so in SYK, it's also uh, so 
because in SYK, it's a system with a bounded uh, spectrum, and uh, so everything. Um, so at a high temperature, you, you're just counting of how many of this co-chromatocinous states there. And uh, so, um, so, in, in, so in some sense, if you somehow one can manage to change this uh, RGJ uh, spectrum to be just a, a bounded spectrum, not uh, like uh, even not even though even uh, it won't have this square root of e, this power law growth, then you can um, you will get the uh, correct counting of those microstates. That will be possible when relation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Any more questions? And, uh, uh, I, I need to mention that it's interesting that uh, this uh, very high high energy regime is universally described by the uh, fast based JT, which is also the uh, CGHS model without matter sector, uh, as uh, um, Spanner was uh, have studied a uh, long time ago. So, so in some sense, the CGHS model is uh, like uh, it it uh, is a universal description of for. Uh, the so high and uh, high energy states in the stereoton reactive theory. Thank you. Yes, that's true. Is there any other question? Uh, hello. Uh, I have just a small question. Uh, yeah. So, in in the self-avoiding loop uh, formalism, is it also possible to see the topological properties of JT gravity? Means means the yeah. the no, uh, no, no, no. The topological properties uh, has to do with uh, um, gr uh, the gross Bonnet term. And this self body loop issue is uh, about this boundary fluctuations. Yeah. Right. So, so means basically one, one can't study the self avoiding loops in high genus. Uh... Oh, yeah you, you, yeah, you can study uh, the self avoiding loops in high genus. And, uh, but, uh, but uh, all this well it doesn't measure or whatever, those things are so, coming from the topological. Those, are, those come from the bulk, uh, you were saying. So. Yeah, this, yeah, this self of any loop will change the boundary piece. So it will give you the, uh, change the trumpet action. So in the JT gravity, there's a trumpet action, which gives you e to the minus b squared over beta. That will mo be modified. But uh, those uh, uh, b integrals, yeah, yes. so it will change the uh, matrix due. But we don't know what what it makes you do, and uh, it's very hard to set, study self avoiding works on high genus. <laughs> so no one have studied it. Uh, I, I at least I haven't, haven't found that people in literature study self avoiding works on high genus. And can you comment on these multi boundary uh, aspects of self avoiding loops? Oh, yeah, so for example, the uh, tr double trumpet. Yes, right? yes. Yeah, so there, there I, uh, so, so I'm not sure about uh, the, uh, so one, we thought about this, but one obvious issue is uh, at a finite cutoff, so, so you in the Schwarzschild limit, everything is fine, it's the same. And if you at the intermediate regime, maybe it's okay, but um, but uh, high temperature. Yeah. yeah, but high temperature, it's very weird because this is a fluctuation very wildly, and this B, this is geodesic lens, if you know what I'm talking about, this B will be highly constrained because it cannot intersect. Uh, so, so you, when you do new things, you get a double trumpet. What about this uh, self avoiding work? Uh, like, uh, Enters from one side to the other side. It's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's like very bizarre thing to think about. But that may give very high correlations, maybe, at of these. Yeah, yeah, it may give you high correlations. Yeah, but I, it's hard to say anything concrete without knowing the answer, and it's hard to know the answer. So in the intermediate region, you might think the effective theory description works. So you just, uh, you can use the classical uh, saddle, which is fine. It's a smooth loop. 
So it just changed the integrated regime of the B. So it will modify the matrix integral a bit. So maybe it will give you some matrix integral with some, uh, some like bar, uh, corresponding to not going to the um, double scale limit. Yeah. So, so I think, yeah. So a general prospect I had is uh, going to uh, put um, going away from the asymptote limit is like uh, going away from the um, double scaling limit. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other question? Uh, hello. Hello. So I had this question about this RGJ formula. Yeah. Like, um, I guess it, it, it kind of also comes down to like whether uh, is there some kind of quantum mechanical model or something uh, which uh, gets this formula, you know, like, like, is it, uh, I, I'm trying to understand what is the physics, is it some tunneling kind of physics, uh, which relates this uh, very small, um, you know, like, uh, yeah, areas to very large areas, I mean, uh, um, the RGJ formula is uh, uh, in, the, in the limit where you don't feel the ADS, uh, ADS curvature. So the RGJ formula actually is like an uh, uh, exact result for flat space JT. So, and you are, you are, I think you are asking what's the boundary due of this RGJ formula, right? Yeah, in a, in, in a certain sense, or, or, or any, any kind of uh, quantum mechanical model or something. Like, should I think of... Like for example, if you know, like uh, it, it, it looks like some tunneling kind of formula, right? Is it like uh, what what is the physics there? It's there's some very small loops, and why do you get airy functions? Uh, is there some yeah. uh, well, explanation for that for flat space JT? Uh, I I don't know how to um, get this airy function in flat space JT, and uh, yeah. The way uh, people get this every functions uh, is through, through, um, from this uh, this recursion relation. Yeah, I don't I don't know uh, very well about uh, the fit, uh, whether there's a tunneling effect of this effect. Okay, so there are some alternative model. Okay. To get this uh, same every function distributions is where you study a quantum mechanics problem where um, it's like a, a quantum, quantum mechanics problem with a linear potential and uh, um, only res restricted uh, to uh, x equal uh, x bigger than zero. Then there's some. Then if you solve this quantum mechanics problem, the spectrum will have some, um, some, some discrete spectrums. And uh, for this problem, if you uh, kind of got, but if you get the patching function, uh, that will describe by, some, um, by the same array functions. And that people were using that quantum mechanics problem to relate it uh, with uh, uh, some model approximate to self-avoiding loops because you can, uh, you can restrict the self body loops to not, not even uh, to be like staircase. And uh, that, uh, yeah, so yeah, that you can think about uh, it's like in the, in the continuous limit, there are some uh, when, uh, quantum mechanics description. But, but I, don't, I don't say how, how it can be connected to, uh, a boundary description of uh, uh, flat space JT. Yes, it looks it, it looks hard. Yeah. For example, this recursion relation, uh, mm -hmm. like, is it? Can you write it as some kind of a differential equation for uh, this uh, f of y? Some kind of Schrodinger Dyson equation or something? Is there some interpretation of that kind? Uh -huh. I'm just trying to get an intuition for the recursion relation, for example. Like, uh, well, well, sometimes this recursion uh, relation is expansion of the array function. 
Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So whatever differential equation, this every function a base, this recursion equation will have base. Is that some simple differential equation, some Schrodinger equation, or something? Uh, I I haven't I haven't thought about it. Yeah, I I I I, I don't know. Thanks. So one 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 other uh, small question. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just remember there there are these papers by Okuniyama and Sakai who studied these uh, JT gravity using intersection theory and they have a high temperature and low temperature expansion of the uh, and the density of states in, in, in those regimes. So mm -hmm. do these results agree with uh, uh, those papers? Uh, no, I haven't uh, read that papers, but I, I would doubt if you, well, the low temperature uh, are they considered about, since you mentioned the intersection series, so I imagine you are talking about uh, those heterogeneous corrections. Yeah, they right. also have heterogeneous corrections and uh, yeah. their high temperature, of course, matches with the uh, Schwarzian, uh, the low temperature matches with the Schwarzian, but uh, they also have a high temperature answer. Okay. In that, they, and they have done it also for multi-boundaries recently. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm, yeah. Uh, so I think I read that paper roughly. So, so I think they are looking at a extremely low temperature region. I'm not. I don't aware of they are. They are looking. At, uh, they have a result for high temperature region. So the, for the extremely low temperature region, I wonder whether their result is actually uh, using uh, reproducing the every function. Yeah, I think that they have also the high temperature, and I don't remember. Uh, Correctly, but uh, even they are studying the regime where beta is order e to the s, not e to the s, not probably. I, I have to, I, I yeah, remember. yeah. So far, as I'm, uh, yeah, I, as I remember, they are studying this regime, uh, which is like uh, the density of states is approximate, the leading density of states approximate by square of e, and so the. Uh, how how corrections give you some array functions, but it's a different array function than what I'm I have here. I see. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember they have array functions. In the, yeah, in the yeah. But that that I guess is coming from the uh, from the square root of e, so the uh, low temperature. So yeah. So the density of states we get is very uh, funny. At the low temperature, it's square root of e. At the high temperature, it's again square root of e. Mm. But with a big coefficient e to the phi boundary and square mm. v. Yeah, and I think they are studying the the square to e coming from the low end, the low temperature. And that can be approximated by some area function with uh, heterogeneous corrections. I see. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I think there there is no more question. So, uh, if there is no more question, so thanks to Zenvin uh, Zenvin again. So, I wish everyone have a nice time, stay safe, and thanks again, Zenvin. Hello. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's a very uh, enjoyable time. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye.